So I'm having a debate soon. Uh, there's this guy on Twitter who wrote an article saying that Spotify is the next Google of audio. And I personally could not disagree more, to be honest. Uh, so I, tw- I, I think someone asked me about the article and I just tweeted, like, I, I think the article makes an incorrect argument. And there's this YouTube channel called The Investment Club and they want to do a debate between me and the guy. And I think next Monday we're going to do the debate. I'll let you guys know how to access it. But follow me on Twitter, at Amit is investing to get to, like, to keep up to date and I'll, you know, you guys will see the, the updates on that debate. Um, Spotify is interesting. I think, you know, I, I don't, uh, Kathy bought this stock. I don't think Spotify is innovative at all. I'm going to be very clear about that. I'm going to a little rant for Spotify right now. And the fundamental reason is you've got to remember that Spotify is in a horrible business, which is music. Music is not a good business. You don't own any of the content. All of it is owned by record labels. So every like piece of proprietary, nothing is proprietary to Spotify in terms of their content outside of the stuff they buy, which we'll get into a second, because uh, Sony Music, Columbia Records, blah, 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 like all of these record companies own all of the music, the, the catalog. So if Spotify's argument is we need to get more people streaming music, every percentage of stream increase that you get or pricing power, like let's say Spotify subscription goes from 10 to $15, baked into the contracts means that out of that $5 increase, a percentage of that goes back to the record labels because again, they're providing the content for Spotify to stream. At the end of the day, Spotify is a middleman for music. That's it. YouTube music does the same thing. Uh, what is it? Amazon music does the same thing. Like, uh, like it, it, it's not that special. Now what makes Spotify special, and I think this is why Kathy has bought it, is because of the recommendation algorithm. The recommendation algorithm for music is pretty strong, which I can understand. However, when I think of a Google of audio, I think of a search engine for audio. I think of a person actually going to Spotify to find information. That is not happening in my opinion at all. I mean, when is the last time you went to Spotify and searched for something to try to find information? Maybe an artist, maybe a song, but not in terms of spoken word audio, which is I think where the real market is in terms of podcasting. Now, the problem is Spotify is not trying to become a Google of audio. They're trying to become a Netflix of podcasts. They bought Gimlet Media. They bought the Ringer Network. They paid 180 for uh, for Gimlet Media, 180 million, 250 million for the Ringer Network, 100 million for Joe Rogan, 60 million for Caller Daddy. They're giving exclusive podcasts left and right. And so the problem to me is if you're buying up all these exclusive pieces of content, you're now becoming a publisher. You're becoming Netflix, right? This is why they have to do all the content advisory warnings for Joe Rogan because like if you're buying if you're buying content, then you have to you have to you have to um, what is it? You have to control the content. You have editorial power over that content. So it is very difficult, in my opinion, to see a company becoming a Google of something because that assumes that you are organizing the world's information in whatever medium, whether it's audio, video, or article format, in one place, and you're creating a, uh, a, a mechanism by which people can access that information very easily. And then on top of that, there's an advertising bu- business built because if you have millions of people searching for content, obviously the, 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 the advertising features just become... In, uh, um, some of the strongest ROI in the world because if you're searching for something, you have the greatest intent to buy, which is why Google as a business is phenomenal. No, people aren't searching on Spotify. People are going to Spotify to like listen to playlists. So, and, and then if they are listening to podcasts, those podcasts end up being stuff that Spotify buys. Like you don't usually get random podcasts recommended into your feed because Spotify has no incentive to show you those random podcasts because they don't make any money off those random podcasts. They make money off Joe Rogan. So they're going to put Joe Rogan in your feed. So I don't see Spotify as that innovative. I have no idea why Kathy Wood's buying it. I mean, like, it, 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 that's another, it's like number seven in ARC. I never understood that at all. Uh, so so I, I really don't see Spotify as a good play. But I'm going to be having that debate in the next couple of weeks and you guys will see. Spotify is like serious, just burning cash on content. I agree with that. Spotify is burning a lot of cash on content. Um, Spotify's great interface and algos. I agree the interface and algorithm is great. However, and this is the big problem here. I have a friend who's trying to do music. He's like heavily into the music scene. And I was talking to him to try to get his perspectives on like how he thinks of Spotify. And he was basically like, I have to pay a guy to pay a guy to pay a guy to even listen to my music before they put it on a playlist that it, that has like 50,000 followers on Spotify. If you are a musician and you do not get your music on a playlist on Spotify, you do not get discovered. It is that simple. Spotify will not put your music in front of new people because the the algorithmic playlists, which are really good, I agree, they're very political at the end of the day as well. They're very political. I mean, the record labels, the playlists are basically the radio. 
And the record labels control it. Like when you go into a car, like when I go into my car, I don't turn on the radio. I turn on my YouTube music playlist. And then YouTube has full, you know, authority over the music that I listen to because I just press next and I keep pressing next until I find a good music, right? Just like you keep flipping the radio channels. So that era is over, which means the recommendation algorithm for music on the playlist really matters. To get on the playlist on any music app, forget Spotify, Spotify is just the biggest, it's very difficult. I mean, you have to build a following on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter to even get the attention of some of these people that own the playlist um, to even put you on the playlist if you're not part of a record label. Because you gotta understand music is very competitive. And the record labels, if they have up and coming stars that are gonna be the next Justin Bieber's, they need to get them as many streams as possible, which means they're gonna be dominating the playlist. So as good as the recommendation algorithm is, I think the discovery of artists Forget podcasters that I or, that I also said can't get access to the home feed because you've got Joe Rogan in the home feed. The musicians aren't getting major discovery on Spotify. Um, so, I re, so I really do think that the fact that the music business is very predatory in terms of the record labels and streaming, the fact that Spotify is basically becoming a Netflix of podcasts, which makes zero sense to me because there's more than enough podcasts to organically recommend and become a true sort of Google of audio, but they're not going that route because they want to have pricing power. How do you get pricing power? You have premium content. To get premium content, you need to buy premium content to have top of the funnel brand awareness. So Netflix went from $10 to $15. Spotify wants to go from $10 to $17 one day. The only way to get you to pay $17 is to have content constantly coming in, but if it, but, but, but in order to do that, it has to be premium because the reason people don't buy YouTube premium is because YouTube is a search engine. You just go to YouTube to find content, right? So most people don't like pay $12 a month for YouTube because they don't see it as a premium content play. And if, and if you can deal with the ads, then there's no reason to buy YouTube premium. But Spotify doesn't even give you access to the music unless you buy premium. So Spotify's entire business is rooted within the subscription revenue. And the problem is to get subscription revenue, you must trade off with creator discoverability because creator discoverability only happens when you can have an advertising model, to be honest, that allows organic discovery of content that you can sell ads on the back end on. Because Google can show any video in the home feed of YouTube as long as it makes advertising revenue. They don't care what the video is. They just want the video to make money on ads. Spotify has to show Joe Rogan because they already paid him a hundred million bucks. So you got to make 101 million bucks to justify spending public shareholder dollars to get generate that ROI, which means the next Joe Rogan doesn't get access to the home feed. That is the fundamental flaw in that business model, which is why I don't really think they can become the YouTube of audio. Bottom line on Spotify, I don't understand why Kathy owns this much of it. If, if Spotify, let me say this very clear. I don't hate Spotify. If Spotify was truly becoming a search engine for audio, meaning they were becoming major competition to Google and YouTube for where people search to find content. And when I mean find content, I'm talking about podcasts because like music, people will always try to find music, but I'm talking about like, how do I you know, do my taxes in 2022? How do I save on my taxes? People go to Google or YouTube. They either watch a video or they, watch, or they read an article. But if you go to Spotify, you should be able to find a podcast immediately, like in a five minute podcast that answers that question immediately, you should be able to find. That is not happening on Spotify. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe in the next five years they figure that out, but I think they've already dedicated over $700 million of public shareholder dollars to this premium podcasting structure of, uh, of like trying to become a Netflix of podcasts, which means they have zero incentive to show you a random piece of audio content because they have all the incentive to show you premium content, which, which creates the, the sort of disconnect between creator discovery on that platform. And I think if you don't let creators get discovered, you can never be a Google of audio. Like Google lets articles across the world become discovered. They let videos across the world become discovered. Until you allow organic discovery, it is very difficult for me to see you becoming a Google of anything because Google is the greatest platform in the world along with TikTok for organic discovery. So those are my thoughts on Spotify. Tim Dillon won't be on the home feed of Spotify. Now, Tim Dillon's a very big name, right? So Tim Dillon might get access to the home feed, but you got to think about Tim Dillon. Let's go to Tim Dillon's Patreon right now since you brought up Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon is making... Um, where's Tim Dillon? Tim Dillon is making, I think, how much on Patreon? $219,000 a month on Patreon. Look at this. 42,000 Patreons. So someone like Tim Dillon will get access to the home feed on Spotify, on YouTube, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram. But if you, you're, the, you know, you're the next comedian, you're trying to be the next Tim Dillon, and let's say instead of 42,000 patrons, you have four patrons, you need a platform to give you organic discovery. It is that simple. Unless you have a platform that is going to put your shit 
in front of people on the home feed, you will never get discovered. Think about me on YouTube. The only reason I have 11,000 people that care about me on YouTube is because YouTube is taking my videos on Palantir and putting them in front of people that will click on it. And then if those people like me, they might come into the morning open where I'm not even talking about Palantir. 143 people are willing to listen to me right now because I've developed a relationship with them. That is only because of YouTube. So for all the shit everyone gives YouTube, YouTube is still one of the greatest platforms in the world. If I had started a Palantir podcast on Spotify only, I would not have one iota of the attention I have right now. Because Spotify does not have an algorithm or an incentive structure or a business model to connect random kid from New Jersey talking about Palantir because he's passionate about Palantir or the next Tim Dillon making jokes about comedy with an audience. YouTube has that incentive. TikTok has that incentive. So that's my point. If you're already big, you'll get access to the home feed. If you are not big, which 99% of the market is not big, you're not getting access to the home feed. And that's why I don't, again, I think Spotify can become a big company, but I do not think they're going to become a big company on the backs of creators getting discovered. That is my argument, which is why I don't see them as the Google of audio. I see them as a Netflix of podcasts and like, it's okay. It's a nice subscription business, I guess. But like at the end of the day, if, if creators find an outlet for discovery, they will always flock to that outlet because they will help them get discovered. And I just don't think Spotify is necessarily doing that. Please, Morton says in the chat, and this is the last thing I'll say on Spotify, then I'll move on. Uh, yeah, and when they get and when they killed Google Music, I, I already had to pay for a subscription for YouTube Music in order to listen to my own music. Why subscribe to Spotify? That's another thing. YouTube Premium, I canceled my Spotify because YouTube Premium is $12 a month. I get ad-free videos and I get music. So like the value proposition of YouTube Music in any rational sense is way better than Spotify. So why does Spotify still get 400 million people? listening a month. And I'm going to prove Spotify gets 400 million people a month because let's go to spotify.com right now. This is a website called a similar web. It shows you the traffic for any company in the world. It's a really awesome website. Look at this. Spotify increased their 455 million. Uh, I think this is a uh, monthly active users or total visits to the website in December, 416 in January, 470 million in February. Why do 470 million people still come to Spotify every month? It's because the interface and the, uh, the user experience on Spotify is probably better than any audio app. I will absolutely agree with that. And, but that's irrational, right? Because YouTube music gives you the same thing with, with way more value proposition, but people still use Spotify. That goes to the fact that if you're ingrained in a service, if you have playlists from 2015 on Spotify, you're probably not going to switch because you want all your music in one place. My argument is about accelerated growth going into the future. I only think in this economy and in this digital economy, you have to have creator discover, discoverability at scale for there to be accelerated growth. This is why TikTok has $11 billion in ad revenue, which is three times the amount of Twitter plus Snapchat combined. Why? And TikTok's like, 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 like 10 years younger than both of those companies because they created discovery. That's it. You, you know why? It's so simple. When you give creators discovery, every single person on earth wants to get discovered whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're a podcaster, whether you're a poet, comedian, musician, whatever it is. And so you're going to give the platform your content because you think you have a chance of getting discovered. As soon as the platform gets that content, what happens? The platform gets proprietary data because all that content is uploaded to the platform. What is the platform able to do? They're able to create an insane recommendation algorithm because they have proprietary data because literally everyone in the world is creating TikToks. And then boom, the platform is able to create the most amazing feed of content and sell a shit ton of ads in between it. I don't see Spotify doing that. I see Spotify going the premium route, which is why I, I'm, I'm not that bullish on them as a company. But that's it. Those are my thoughts.